Brennan Allen versus Chris Curtis 2 has ended in a controversial decision, so Mike Bell scored it for Chris Curtis. He gave him the second, third, and fourth rounds, Allen the first and fifth. Derek Cleary gave Chris Curtis the second and third rounds, first, fourth, and fifth to Allen. And then Eric Holen scored it a 49-46, only giving Chris Curtis the second round. I think it's pretty much consensus. Everybody agrees. I went back to look at it. The fight was 2-2 two two going into the fifth. Brennan Allen had the first and fourth rounds. Chris Curtis had the second and third. This is the way I have it going into the fifth round. Some people might disagree a little bit with the fourth, probably giving it to Chris Curtis, but Allen did take him to the ground. He got his back. He attempted rear naked chokes. He didn't get them, but he attempted, which does score for effective grappling. It's him getting a dominant position and trying to finish the fight from there. He also got full mount as Chris Curtis tried to get up, and he landed some big shots. The biggest shot of the entire round was that one elbow from Allen as Chris Curtis was looking to throw the left hand that made him look like he stumbled from the blow. So it all comes down to the fifth round. As we know from the judging criteria, effective striking and effective grappling trump everything. So pretty much the damage and the striking and the grappler attempting to finish the fight on the ground. You can't just take somebody down and that's it. Getting good positions does score. And even further on top of that, getting submissions are the biggest thing for grappling. It does seem like a lot of people look at submission attempts like they're takedowns, but that's not the same thing. Just taking somebody down doesn't mean anything, but going Going for submissions always count. They always score. The closer you get submissions, the more they matter, and it makes the positions also count for more as well. Now, in order to categorize the strikes the most accurate way I can, we're going to be scoring the strikes in terms of light, medium, and heavy, just to give it some kind of rule, because usually I would just go off of what it looks like. Light strikes are getting like no to little reaction from the opponent. Medium strikes give somewhat of a reaction, and then heavy strikes or where the fighter looks like they got hurt. And it could be from any sort of strike. We have to also remember here that any strike could be light, medium, or heavy. A knee to the face, if it doesn't cause any reaction, can be a light strike. If the guy takes it and just keeps fighting like nothing happened to him, that's going to be a light strike. A jab can be a heavy strike. It could be a knockdown. It can knock somebody out. So there's a scale here for every single strike of where it can be categorized. It's not the way that they throw it. It's the way that it's delivered. And the only way we know the delivery of the shot is from the reaction of the opponent. As that's paraphrased in the scoring criteria. As this is what the scoring criteria defines as impact. Quote, a judge shall assess if a fighter impacts their opponent significantly in a round, even though they may have not dominated the action. Impact includes visible evidence such as swelling and lacerations. Impact shall also assess when a fighter's actions using striking and or grappling lead to a diminishing of their opponent's energy, confidence, abilities, and spirit. All of these come as a direct result of impact. When a fighter is impacted with strikes by lack of control and or ability, this can create defining moments in the round that shall be assessed with greater value. Unquote. So, impact, this is going for striking and grappling. Anything that happens in this kind of thing here, when a fighter is showing that they're hurt in some kind of way, no matter what it's from, it could be just a slap to the face. If that wobbles his opponent, that's going to be scored heavy here. And it also comes with uh, the grappling aspect of this. Now, we do know in the fifth round that Chris Curtis got injured toward the end of that. According to the impact definition here, it could also count. Now, it just depends if Brendan Allen's the one that injured him or Chris Curtis injured himself. So that's going to be the important thing. So let's get started in that fifth round. We start with a jab to the face from Brendan Allen. Doesn't get much of a reaction. So therefore, that is going to be a light strike. Allen then throws a high kick, which does get blocked and doesn't get much of a reaction from Chris Curtis. So the kick wasn't completely blocked and we know the impact usually gets through somewhat. Another light strike from Brendan Allen. And just to clarify, light strikes are never really going to determine who won a fight. Because we're really only trying to find the most damaging shots. Looking at the light strikes, we can kind of differentiate what the biggest shots are. Now, a jab gets blocked by Chris Curtis, hits the hand. These are not going to be the same as partially blocking a head kick. Because this could be categorized as a full block on a punch. A scraping jab from Chris Curtis as he enters in. And he grazes a left straight as well when Brendan Allen's throwing his left hook at the same time. So they both kind of graze their shots here, nothing big. And on the follow through, as Allen's dragging his head to the right side, Chris Curtis lands an overhand right that gets a bigger reaction than the other shots. So this is going to be a medium strike for Chris Curtis. A touching left hand from Chris Curtis as Allen's moving away. This is really nothing. Allen push kicks the leg. Doesn't really get much there either. As Allen's digging in with the right straight, Chris Curtis is able to counter him with a toe kick to the body. And then Allen retracts his stance before he engages again. At the very end of the jab, Allen's able to touch Curtis as he's moving away. Again, nothing really much here. 
Then Allen throws his own body kick, hits it with the toes, but doesn't really get much of a reaction out of Chris Curtis, as Curtis partially blocks the kick on the way in, and then he looks to deflect it away after it hits the target. Now, the one knee that they were going crazy about, it actually does not land on Brendan Allen. The thigh lands under the arm, so really nothing happened here. And while he's defending the following takedown, Chris Curtis lands six punches before Allen goes to try to get his back. So Allen's got one hook in, and he's grabbing under the other leg. Looks like he wants to go for the Suluev stretch, but before he attempts it, he lands one punch. It's not really going to matter too much, and he goes for the stretch, right? He's pulling the leg. This is an actual submission attempt that credits Brennan Allen here for effective grappling. He not only got a good position, but he got the position he needed for this kind of submission, but he loses the hook and tries to turn it into a knee bar as Chris Curtis is rotating to get himself out of there. So you could even credit Brennan Allen with two different submission attempts. The second one wasn't in though, right? The Sulev stretch was better here than the knee bar, but they are both credited to Brennan Allen for effective grappling. He even tried to go for it again when Curtis was up, but that wasn't even close. So now that they're both up, both fighters are able to land a jab on each other. The jab from Brennan Allen doesn't really do anything because it does get partially parried. The jab from Chris Curtis got Allen to move back a little bit, not because of the damage of the blow, but because Allen wanted to dis engage but while he does that he opens up the body and Chris Curtis lands a pretty good left to the body then falls up with a right overhand over the shoulder as Brendan Allen's extending with his left jab that misses Allen tries a hand trap as he walks his way in and eats a really good elbow from Chris Curtis Allen throws a short uppercut in the clinch doesn't really give any impact. Another light strike for Allen. Chris Curtis throws another elbow, but this one lands more with the forearm. This is really nothing. Another elbow from Chris Curtis lands, but this is as Brendan Allen's also moving his head away. And Allen goes and throws a knee that hits Chris Curtis's nose and slides past his face after. Curtis really showing no reaction to the blow. And the exchange ends with Chris Curtis landing a left straight to the mouth as Allen throws the left hook at the same time and he stumbles backwards. Now, here's the thing. Some people might say he stumbled backwards because he lost balance from throwing his left hook. But you can also say he lost balance because he got hit by a pretty good left straight at the same time. So, so we're going to give this a medium strike for Chris Curtis. We're not going to be coping here. Allen throws a right straight through the guard. They both hit each other with a hook that doesn't give any reaction from either fighter. Jab lands for Chris Curtis. This would have been a very big strike for Brendan Allen, but he grazes an uppercut when he perfectly slips on the outside of Chris Curtis's jab. He grazes the side of his face with the uppercut, man. Now, they both land on each other, but Curtis lands two shots. Allen lands one. Allen's coming right at him, and Curtis lands a right shovel hook, seems like on the neck and the jaw. But Allen lands a good right elbow, followed up by a left hook from Chris Curtis. We'll give him both a medium strike for that. Here comes another high kick from Brendan Allen that gets partially blocked, but this one seems to have a much more impact go through the guard. Curtis didn't just eat this this time. He gives more of a reaction from the knockback of the kick. They both land on each other again. Curtis lands a jab to the face, but Brendan Allen easily eats it and lands a right hook of his own that gets a bigger reaction out of Chris Curtis. They both land on each other again. Allen lands a really good right straight, blowing back Curtis's head as he throws the right hook that also lands on Brendan Allen. But the shot from Allen had more impact than Chris Curtis's. A left hook from Allen lands on Curtis. After Brendan Allen shoots a takedown, Chris Curtis sprawls on top and is able to land seven punches to the head, body, and legs. They both land on each other again. Chris Curtis throws a very poor jab, barely does anything to Brendan Allen, and at the same time, Allen lands a good right straight with much more impact. We can't really see if this left hook from Chris Curtis lands on Brendan Allen, and also this right uppercut as well. I thought he was trying to go to the body, but you see it go under the arm, upward toward the head, and from the camera angle, we can't see if either punch lands on Brendan Allen. But we can see this right hook from Brendan Allen turn Chris Curtis's head when he's moving to his own left side. And as Allen's shooting another takedown, he throws a right overhand that lands toward the neck. And Allen picks Chris Curtis up before he slams him, which also counts for effective grappling. Takedowns that hurt your opponent or can cause some kind of damage is not just a regular takedown according to the scoring criteria. And Allen goes and gets his back yet again, which also counts for effective grappling. Two punches on the ground land for Brendan Allen and three for Chris Curtis. Allen's like kinda going for the rear naked chokes, but also looking to control the wrists of Chris Curtis. So what also counts for Curtis now in effective grappling is his ability to reverse 
Brendan Allen, where they both land a shot on each other from there. Allen goes and shoots another takedown after he gets stood up, and Curtis lands a knee to the chest, but Allen was still able to secure the takedown. He did the same thing as before when he threw the overhand right while going for the takedown, but this time it looks like the punch lands toward the chest and shoulder of Chris Curtis. From this takedown attempt, Curtis lands one punch before he tries to stand up, and that's where it seems like his hamstring gets pulled or, you know, some kind of injury happens there. Now, it looks like Allen was not looking to injure him, right? He wasn't looking to hurt him, but instead try to re-secure the takedown or some kind of control on Curtis as he's standing up. His right leg was on the inside between Allen's legs. Allen had a little bit of weight on top of the ankle, and it seemed to be some kind of freak accident here, injuring Chris Curtis. Curtis stands up and tries to step to his right, but he kind of gets tripped out a little bit by the left leg of Brendan Allen, and it looks like right here you can see... Something happens to the inside of his leg. Brendan Allen pounces on him, throws a switch flying knee to the head, partially lands to the side of the head of Chris Curtis, as well as it also getting partially blocked as well. That's why you didn't see that much impact from the blow. And the only reaction Curtis has really given here is the pain from his leg. Allen lands a right hook to the body, an elbow to crush the guard. Chris Curtis throws a right uppercut to the body on the inside before taking a knee to the head, but you see him stumble over, mainly because he can't get too much balance on that leg and his head is getting pulled down as well. So the knee could have hurt him, but we do also know that he can't stand on that leg that well. Another partially blocked head kick. This one, of course, shows more of a reaction. We also do know that his leg is injured, but you could give this a heavy strike for Brendan Allen because the weight of Chris Curtis is also going to be on his left leg, which is going to force him to stand into the head kick and not really move away from it. Left hook lands for Brendan Allen, and that ends the fifth round. So by tallying up all the damage, we can see that Curtis Blades landed more strikes, 38 to 30. Light strikes also go to his side. Medium strikes go to Allen, and he has the only heavy strike of the round, mainly because Curtis did get injured in the fight. So some of these strikes are, of course, going to be subjective in terms of how we're going to categorize them. But even on top of this, Brendan Allen got the slam. He got his back. He went for the submissions. Some of the strikes can be up for debate, of course, but it's clear in hindsight, after re-watching this, who won the round. The fifth round goes to Brennan Allen, 10-9. So did the judges get this correct? Really only one of them did, but yes, Brennan Allen was the victor of the fight. Very unfortunate for Chris Curtis to get hurt like that. And for the judges, seeing him get hit by some of these strikes and wobble around is a very bad look, regardless if he's injured or not. Because the judges can't go off of speculation, right? They can't just speculate, oh, he's injured, but you know, it looked like that shot hurt him. I'm gonna guess how hurt he is, you know? We can only really go off of what we see and not speculate you know so i could even see that last high kick not being a heavy i could see it being a medium and that would still give brendan allen the win clearly so hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown and if you did make sure to give this a like make sure to subscribe at the button for notifications at first i even thought that chris curtis probably won this fight but re-watching it it actually seems kind of clear that brendan allen won